Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to give you guys uh, a little overview of how to do uh, the report for this week's lab, uh, where we're going to do the molar mass from the freezing point in lab plot. I'm actually going to use the Mott VDI to do this, just to give you guys a little demonstration about that. I have it open here. I'm actually using the Horizon client, um, which is the better way of doing it, but you can do this inside of your web browser as well. Um, the first thing is that it's always a little confusing because you have a computer that's inside of a bigger computer. So one of the first things that's really can be very helpful is if you just go to view here and uh, full screen this guy up and now you can just work inside of there and you can always come up here and get out of that if you need to that might hide itself later but it'll always be there so now what we're going to do is we're just going to open up Firefox inside of the VDI navigate to canvas we'll open up our class here and then we need to get to lab flow from here you should always go from here to lab flow you shouldn't try and log into lab flow directly and we could come down here and click on one of these links to our assignments it, it doesn't really matter. They all just wind up taking you to lab flow. So even if you just click this top one here, it'll wind up redirecting you to lab flow. Now that we're in lab flow, we're going to go down to our assignment. So we can see that we have a PDF here that you guys are going to need to read through and review. And in particular, what I want to show you guys is going to be how to use Excel to do this portion right here. You'll need to read that PDF and take a look at the video, and that's going to tell you how you can get your answers for your pre-lab quiz. And then you can get into the report. So if I click on the report, I'm going to take me, mine looks a little different than your guys's. You guys will start with something that looks like this. And the first question is how you're going to collect your data. You're going to choose virtually here. The next question or the next thing that's a little confusing is you need to click this button over here, request provisional data. And then you can come over here to confirm. And what they've done is they've given us this data that's over here highlighted in red. Okay. So we have time over here and then we have temperature over there and there's two sets of these. There's that one up there and there's this one down here. The first thing we need to do is get this into Excel and they didn't make that super duper easy for us. But what I like to do is just make this really, really small so that I can fit it all in there. Come down here to start, click on Excel, just have that open. We can minimize that for now. We'll come over here. We'll start up here. And we'll just highlight that whole thing there. You can control C that or you can right click and hit copy. Come into Excel here. And paste this into Excel. And it did an all right job, but it doesn't have that perfect. Let me increase the zoom here a little bit so you guys can see it better. There we go. This guy actually needs to go down there. So if I get like kind of close to the edge here, and I should see that cursor change to that. And then I can move it down. This needs to be temperature. And then it's in units of degrees Celsius. 
and then I have a blank row here so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna hit delete that so if I click over here I can highlight that whole row and get rid of it if I want and then I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna spread them out a little bit so I can really take a look at my data here so the first thing I like to do when I'm doing these is just highlight the whole thing I'm gonna start in the top left and come down to the bottom right all that data there and what's nice about this is we do have X over here and Y over here so we did want it to be in that way that form and that's the way that they gave it to us and then I'm gonna come over here to insert and then we want to come over here to charts and you they replaced everything with pictures um, so you actually want this one right here if you click that little thing on the side there you can pick this guy all right and right now we have to make a little bit of a decision we have to decide when on this graph did it uh, actually freeze okay so the freezing point would have been when the temperature became relatively stable and it started to uh, um, flatten out there okay so one way to make that a little easier to see is to actually change this axis here so we can click on that right click it come down to format axis and we can make the minimum value instead of zero we're gonna make that 60 once we've done that you can see a little bit more clearly here where that transition happens so if, if I was looking at this I would say that this is the first point where it starts going flat and then every point above that one it was kind of coming down to that point there okay um, so it really doesn't matter I mean this one's kind of in contention is this in the flat one or is this in that one it's not really gonna matter a ton for this but I would say that this is in the, in the flat region so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover my um, cursor over that and I see that it says series 1.570 and then it's got the point there 570 69.4 so what that's telling us is that it's this point right here um, and so this point and all the points after that are in the flat region okay and all the points above it are in the cooling region so what I need to do is actually get those into my graph as separate points okay so what I want to do is I can click on all those points there you see that they're all highlighted now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go down here to where it says select data okay and I have these series here so what I really want to do is I want to have two series okay the first one I want that one to be all of the points down to 21 so I want it to be all of these points and you can see what it did is it actually put that little plus right there uh, and tried to add it but we can just get rid of all those and it'll be right just like that okay and you can see that it's just plotting all those points now up here okay now we need to add a new series uh, we can just call it series 2 all right and we're going to have to choose some new x values for that series those x values are going to be these ones and we're going to choose some new y values for them and those are going to be these values right here and then we're going to hit OK. So now I got two series here to work with, and I can hit OK. And you can see what we've done now. Okay, they're different colors and everything like that. So now it thinks of these as two separate series that are on here, and not just one set of data. A little tip is this is a really great time to come up here to Chart Design, go to Quick Layout and choose one of these guys here there we go you have this here so now we can actually give them axis titles so i can make 
this one here. Temperature, degrees Celsius. And then here, this one's going to be time in seconds. Yep. And if we really wanted to, we could go in here again, go to select data, go here, edit this, rename this to be cooling, and then rename this to be frozen. And then that'll look really, really nice for us. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to do linear regression. Okay. We want a line that comes down through here and we want a line that comes across here and we want to see where those two intersect. So first I'm going to highlight this one here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to add trend line. I want a linear trend line here. I want it to display the equation and I want it to display the R squared. I do not want to set the intercept for that. Now I can just exit out of that. We'll put that down here kind of next to this one. It makes it a little easier to keep them straight. We'll click here. We'll go to add trend line. Again, we want that to be linear. We still want it to display these values on the chart there and we're good to go so now in theory where these two lines are crossing even though it's a little hard to see on our graph we that is going to be where we uh, the freezing actually happen all right um, the what we're really looking for here is the temperature. So we want the Y at which point uh, these two lines meet one another. Okay. So what we're going to do there is we're going to solve one of these for X. We're going to solve the other one for X. Okay. So then we're going to have two equations of Y we're going to set those two equal to each other and then we'll solve for the y at which the two can cross and that will be our freezing temperature okay uh, if we go back to our lab flow report i'm gonna tile this guy over here Come back to the report here and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to make it big again. We have some questions here that are all answered by these values here. Okay, so remember that this was for the cooling and this is for the freezing portion. All right, so the slope of the cooling portion, that's this guy right here. Okay y-intercept of the uh, cooling portion, that's that guy right there, okay. Uh, first time to exclude in the freezing portion, all right, so that's going to be this point right here on the, on the uh, trend line there. So if I click that, it's highlighted it for me over here. Should have highlighted it for me over there. Try that again. I got the trend line and not the actual point. There we go. So our first point was that 570 point. So if I click here, I come down, it's going to be that 570 point there. Uh, the final time to include in the freezing portion that's going to be the last time that we have down here, 900. So now it knows how you made that judgment call. All right. The slope of the freezing portion is going to be this guy right here. 
the y-intercept of the freezing portion is going to be that guy right there. And the time at which the two intersect, that would be if I s took this equation here and I set it equal to that equation there and then I solved for x because x is our time. That's going to be there. And then the calculated freezing point that would be if I solved for this in terms of uh, x and solved for x here set those two equal to each other and then solved for y that would be the temperature at which it froze and then you upload your excel plot here and then we're going to actually do, so now that we know what those freezing temperatures were, one for the pure uh, steric acid, and then one for the steric acid and the unknown solute, then we'll know the change in temperature, the change in the freezing temperature. Uh, and we can come down here and we can start to do all of these calculations that we went over in the lecture to determine the molar mass.